Hello to your daily devotion for Friday, September 10th. And our reading this morning comes to us from Matthew, the 5th chapter, beginning with the 17th verse. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. In my devotion on Wednesday, I talked about the law and its importance and how we must grasp the preaching of the law and to allow it to work on us and convict us before we can truly receive the gospel. Because the gospel itself is nonsense to someone who believes they have no need of forgiveness. Among those in the original audience for Jesus' Sermon on the Mount were people who certainly believed that they had no need of forgiveness. And who were they? The Pharisees and the teachers of the law. They thought themselves to be morally superior to everyone around them because they kept at least the visually observable parts of the law. And remind you, the visually observable parts of the law are not just such things as wearing special clothes or washing your hands in a particular way or observing or not observe, observing certain holidays or not eating certain foods. There's so much more than that. They also wouldn't get caught stealing. They wouldn't get caught murdering or lying or committing adultery or any of these things. There's more to not, not breaking the observable parts of the law than just a few ritual things that we recognize we are no longer as Christians obligated to follow. Their behavior actually was, by the standards of their time and even of ours, really, really good. But Jesus is saying it's not good enough. The reason why he's saying that will become very clear next week when we dig deeper into what Jesus teaches about certain laws. And we allow those things to work on our hearts and realize that what he's trying to do here is convict everyone. To make everyone realize that they, in and of themselves, have no righteousness worth mentioning. He is going to be accused of abolishing the law. Of saying that as long as your heart is right with God, everything is okay. Which is a half-truth. I mean, it's fully true that as long as your heart with, is right with God, and as long as you understand and accept God's offer of reconciliation and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, everything is okay. But before you can truly understand that, you have to realize how not right your heart is with God. Jesus will intensify the preaching of the law. He will make it more than people thought it was. He will show that it is not enough merely not to break it. But as long as we have the inclination to break it, the temptation to break it, we are not as fully righteous as God would have us be. So we should celebrate the law, even when it makes us feel really, really bad about ourselves or people close to us. Because it is only through the conviction of the law that the forgiveness of the gospel can truly break through. Let us pray. We thank you, God, once again for the law and for the realization that our own efforts of righteousness aren't enough. What we need is to take our broken and contrite hearts to you and allow you to work on them and create new, clean hearts within us. Help us to do this, and as we go forward, learning more about your law through the Sermon on the Mount, may we be allowed to have our hearts broken in order that they might be healed again. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again soon.